What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, we had the first presidential debate last night, which actually moved the markets uh, very weird. We saw the markets run up while the, de while the debate was going on. Then it fell uh, in pre-market, and then when the market opened, it came back up, and then in the middle of the day today, it fell again. So uh, we just had a very volatile day, and we have a lot to talk about. Uh, we do have some important news that we're going over, and so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to hear all the plays and all the news uh, that we are looking at for the rest of this week. And I know we had a very volatile day uh, yesterday and today uh, with this debate and uh, with politics and the election coming up. I think we're in for a very volatile uh, next couple months. So let's get right into the news for today. Yeah, we actually had the debates last night and there was actually no clear direction or no clear winner in that debate. You know, um, really the only way we could have seen a, a real winner in my eyes is if one of the candidates actually, you know, stumbled and actually fell off the board, which neither actually did. So um, with that being said, you can see the market ended up um, going on a roller coaster last night. And you can see this is the SPY. So um, at about 830, which was right around whenever the debate was starting central time, you can see the market was going up. And right whenever the debate started, the market just tanked down and it tanked all um, pretty much all night long until the morning and then we came way back up and even broke the highs of the day before so you know it's just been one of those roller coaster markets and this is what happens whenever you have uncertainty in the markets and you know me and mike were talking about this and you know it, it's just something that whenever you're trading options uncertainty is one of the worst things you can have because flat movement like this is just terrible for the markets now it is good for quick day trading movement but it's it's bad to hold options whenever you have um, market swings like this yeah, and I know everyone's going to have a different opinion uh, with politics saying, you know, Biden won or Trump won. But in the market's view, in, in the market's uh, point of view, uh, there really was no direct winner. And how do we know that? Because the market was running up while the debate was going on. Then it fell. And, and we're pretty much at the same exact spot uh, as we were yesterday. So if we saw a clear winner, the market would be up or down uh, at, at least a decent amount right now, rather than pretty much like we're at literally almost the same point as yesterday. So um, that's what the market thinks about this, but um, we are just in for a lot of volatility. What else happened to that? Yeah, and some of the good news that helped fuel the market coming back up this morning was actually the jobs report that came out. CNBC reported that companies added better, better than expected 749,000 jobs versus a 600,000 estimate amid a jump in construction and hospitality, the ADP says. Plus, news of a possible stimulus deal fueled the markets this morning as a lot of stocks started to turn green. But overall, the market really took a turn to the downside towards the end of the day whenever those stimulus talks actually went sour because Pelosi, um, P Pelosi I mean, and, Minu and Mnuchin failed to reach the, um, a deal in those talks. And, you know, it was the first time they'd met in person um, since last month, and it was raising hopes of Congress approving more aid to boost the U.S. economy and healthcare system before the November 3rd election. But, you know, they were supposed to meet today, and that was actually boosting up the markets this morning, and then they pretty much failed to reach a deal, and then that's why the markets pretty much turned uh, sour at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I know the market turning red at the end of the day, you know, caught a lot of traders off guard. And uh, this is pretty much the big news as of why, you know, the market really did uh, fall over, um, you know, once 1 p.m. Central Time rolled around. And then I also wanted to point out that we saw the VIX or the VXX, uh, it was pretty steady all day long. So even when the market was shooting up in the middle of the day, uh, the VIX was actually rising with it. And uh, for all of our viewers who are not familiar with the VIX, uh, the VXX is a volatility index. So uh, the VXX is actually a VIX ETF, but uh, the VIX, the index is VIX. Um, but the, we saw the VIX today, uh, it was going up. And basically what happens and what this means is normally when there's uncertainty in the markets or there's volatility, um, the VIX goes up. So most of the time when the market's up, the VIX is down. When the VIX is up, the market's down. So um, to see the VIX and the market up at the same time, usually what happens is we see um, a lot of volatility come into the market 
and normally it ends in the market falling a little bit. So um, like I said, we saw the VIX rise in the middle of the day, which is not the best to see for the market. And it actually had a pretty good close too. So in the after hours right now, it's sitting right near its high of day. So that's interesting. And basically it's just kind of a bearish signal for the market. So uh, keep that in mind. And I was looking actually, yeah. So I was looking at the past election, how the market was performing uh, before we saw the election. And we saw um, a lot of volatility, a lot of up, down, a lot of gap downs, and then uh, gap ups the next day. And then just a ton of volatility. And I'm really expecting this to continue to continue until the next election. What do you think? Yeah, let me go back to it on the daily chart and actually find, you know, that exact date really quick if I can. Yeah, it was like November 8th of 2016. I was just looking at it. Yeah, 2016. I'm, there we go. Yeah, it's just hard to find it on whenever you zoom into the daily chart. But yeah. There it is. Yeah, right here. So this is right where the election was. And you can kind of see how the market um, kind of was falling. And then as soon as that election happened, the market just kind of gapped up and really just kept flying onwards from there. I mean, uh, obviously, once the market, um, you know, saw some certainty come into it, you can just tell how much it liked that certainty. And it just continued upwards for those for the um, for that first year or two until, you know, we started having problems with China that brought a lot of volatility back into the market. Can you go back to 2016 around uh, November? Um, so if we look back on that chart, yep, exactly. So look at September and October on the chart. Can you just like point that out for the viewers? Uh, yep, right in that area. We just saw a ton of volatility, you know, huge green days and then red days the next day was just very volatile. And we're probably gonna see something like this until the election. So my main point is, um, especially if you're a new trader, now is not the time to go heavy in any plays or you know do anything that's too risky because um, there's just a lot of volatility and especially if you're trading options, risk management is the most important thing right now because we're gonna see a lot of weird movement. We're gonna see a lot of things that just don't make sense. Like kind of how we saw the movement of the SPY in the past 24 hours. Um, we're gonna see a lot of weird moves. So. Uh, now it's more important than ever to one, uh, not enter too heavy on any specific place, but also to, you know, make sure you have those stop losses in because uh, we're in for a pretty volatile uh, next couple months. Yeah, there's been a ton of traders lately asking me, you know, should I get some long term calls like on Apple, on Tesla, on, you know, all these hot stocks. And the thing is, is that while, while it seems like a good idea on paper, it might be better to get shares on that stuff right now because if you get options and the market goes flat or it goes sideways, you know, you're getting hurt from that time with the options. You know, I know a lot of people who play options, they, they, they want to only play options, of course, but um, sometimes like, like in a market right now, whenever you're talking about long-term plays, it, it's a lot better to go with just regular shares at this point, you know, over those options and just right now keep the options to like day trades or, or smaller swings. Yep. So now for today's Discord member of the day. So today's member of the day is Gandu, who made a pretty solid trade uh, with Baba this morning. So uh, he said, thanks, Mike. Baba was a quick $80 for me this morning in a matter of four minutes. So uh, great job with that trade. That was actually the free day trade for today, Tom. So uh, if you guys want to get trades like this every single day, uh, you can click the Discord link in the description down below. It's completely free, and every day, I'd say about 15 minutes before market open, uh, Tom and I share two to three different setups that we are eyeing uh, just for quick little day trades, and Baba was one of them today, and uh, this person made $80 from it. So uh, great job with that, and now for our momentum plays for tomorrow, and the first one is Uber. So uh, when we look at Uber's chart, we can see it had a decent day to the upside, and it closed near its highs. What levels should we be watching? Yeah, just watch for it to break above 36.50, which seems to be a pretty good resistance. And this was also a high of, um, of, of Monday as well. Awesome. So yeah, we're eyeing Uber to the upside. If, if it can break above the level Tom listed, then we have BABA, -B -A, which is Alibaba, again to the upside. Yeah, Baba, watch for them to break 295, which was the high of today. And this was a great day trade this morning. That was an awesome call out, Mike. Thank you. And then last but not least, we have TTD again to the upside. TTD, make them break 520.50. I really like this one. Um, that 520 
39 seemed to be a, a pretty good resistance today, but I would make it break 520.50. All right, sounds good. So we are eyeing all these plays to the upside only if they can break above the levels Tom listed. And just for a quick little in and out day trade. So now for the $6.1 million option that we are eyeing for tomorrow, uh, we are looking at the BABA 300 strike call option next part of this Friday, October 2nd. So there was about $6.1 million put into this play. All-time highs on BABA are around $299. Uh, this option is $300, so it's a little bit um, higher than the all-time highs. I think it's a very risky trade. You know, I think it's a very high-risk, high-reward trade, but it's, it's risky. You know, we could see, um, I'm sure we're probably going to see some weird movement um, for the rest of this week uh, in pre-market and the after hours. So I just think it's a risky trade. Um, can Baba continue up? Absolutely. But um, I think we're, I think the best way to play this play is potentially just for a day trade. What do you think? Yeah, I think that $300 level is going to be a pretty solid resistance for them. You know, it seems like it has been in the past. Obviously, that's their high is around, is around 377 in pre-market because – you know, we all know pre-market has some crazy movements. So yeah. that's why it probably popped above 300. But, you know, it's awesome to see that BABA is almost back up to highs. And really with the market being the way it is, that, that's what would just really, you know, make me not want to trade BABA right now just because of the fact that the market's not, not um, you know, in its prime state right now. If, if this was the first month of our recovery back up from the coronavirus, this would be a different type of play. But, you know, with the overall political landscape and everything right now, too, it's just so uncertain right now. And really, until we see a stimulus package, I'm going to be a little wary of playing uh, pretty much any call right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, and with the comments from the previous episode, we have Jack W saying, I have a question for you guys. Do you think the stock PEIX will continue to be bullish? So looking at this stock, it had an amazing run up. Went from about 22 cents to highs of $8.47 in the past uh, nine months. So I uh, had an amazing run up. Um, I've never heard of this company before, so I don't know about them fundamentally. But on a, on a technical standpoint, it looks good, uh, but I would say I would wait for a break of their all-time highs um, like before entering it in a bullish way because, you know, I like when you look at a stock and it goes from $0.22 cents to $8.47 in less than nine months, it just makes me very skeptical and I just feel like it needs to pull back a little bit um, before it can run up. What do you think? Yeah, and it sounds like an oil and gas company. It's called Pacific Ethanol. So, you know, it, it would probably be some type of oil and gas company or obviously an ethanol company. So I think that a lot of those companies can get pretty volatile and really like, like, like we just saw. That's a crazy rise up to this level and just make it break 847. And I would just play it safe that way because, you know, just keep in mind that a lot of traders really get hurt on these types of stocks because they like to run, but if you buy in at the top, you know, these, you could end up losing 50% really quickly. Yep. And then we had uh, Sean C saying, Hey, great video. Is anyone looking at UV, uh, UV XY for next month? Uh, market is going to get more volatility for sure. So I definitely agree with you. So I have my eyes on the VXX, which is pretty much uh, the same thing as the UVXY. Uh, the UVXI, UVXY is leveraged, which I don't like uh, because it just falls a little more um, over time due to that, uh, just the way leveraged ETFs work. Um, but it is also leveraged. So um, when you see the VIX up, you know, X percent, it'll be up two or three X, two or three X percent. So um, it has bigger moves, but I am watching the VIX, which like I said, is pretty much the same thing as the UVXY. Um, I have my eyes on it. I'm not looking at it for a play right now. If we start to see the market fall a little bit, like we get closer to that 325 level, I'll definitely have my eyes on VXX. But right now, um, or I'll definitely consider VXX for a trade. But right now, I'm just uh, just watching it in the background. All right. And with the next comment we have, uh, we have Matt saying, thank you for answering my question tonight. Uh, my strike is $9.50, uh, $1 out of the money on SPXU 
uh, October 30th expiration. Looking at 2016, uh, they would expire the Friday before election day on Tuesday. So uh, let's take a look, SPXU. So Tom, this was the uh, trade from, I think it was a couple days ago or, or yesterday's video uh, where he had a call option on the SPXU that expires on October 30th. We just didn't know what strike. So turns out he has a $9.50 strike. I think that's decently close to the money. I would like it to be closer to the money or at least in the money. Um, but I, I still think given your strike price, uh, you can't go wrong with getting more time. So if I look at the October 30th expiration and we look at the $9.50 strike calls, it's about, um, about $50 right now. So if we go to like the November chain, like November 20th, uh, for $50, you can get the 11 strike call, which in my opinion would be the better way to go, or even the 12 strike call, because you know you have 51 days rather than 30 days. And uh, the time decays can get really brutal on that contract because uh, options decay the most in the last 30 days of their, um, of their span, you could say. You know, The closer you get to expiration, the more they decay. So especially like when you get one to two weeks away, um, it'll really decay in value. So I would recommend, I would definitely go with the uh, November the November chain, November 20th. Um, but of course, always trust your own gut. And you know, even if you could do like a call debit spread, that would be great. Like even if you did stay with the October 30th, like if you bought like the $9.50 call and like sold like the $12.50 call, I think that could be great too. All right. So Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for tomorrow? Yeah. One of the big stocks I've really been watching lately has been Snapchat. They've been really close to their high that, that they hit in July. And this is awesome to see because um, this could either mean number one, they're going to fly above that high or number two, they're going to obviously hit that uh, resistance up there and fall down. So, you know, I'm going to be watching um, SNAP tomorrow because it's getting really close to that level. And I think that if it breaks that level to the upside, we could see maybe not a huge pop above it, but you know, whenever, whenever you break above that, if it, if it has a one to $2 move, those options will play out very well for us. And if it doesn't break and it gets rejected and the overall market comes down too, there's a lot of um, room to the downside on this. Obviously it's went up so much over the past year or two that, um, you know, there's just so much room to the downside on it. So it's just, it's just a good setup either way with it um, being really close to that, that high. Awesome. And then I saw another comment that I just wanted to answer because I know a lot of people have this question uh, from Jelani saying, can someone explain to me how do I check futures? So um, yes. So if you're on Thinkorswim or like any other advanced trading platform, um, it's they're pretty easy to view. For Thinkorswim, you can just go to slash YM and that'll show you the chart for Dow futures like Tom just showed you slash YM. If you want to see S&P 500 futures, you can do slash ES. Um, if you want to see NASDAQ, you can do slash NQ. Um, if you want to see like commodities, like gold, silver, crude oil, uh, like gold is slash GC, uh, crude oil slash CL. So those are the main ones. But um, if you don't have Thinkorswim or an advanced trading platform, you can just head over to CNBC.com. And there is a tab at the top of the screen that says uh, futures, or you can just click pre-market. So uh, if you just click pre-market or futures, uh, that will show you the futures and it's free and it's easy to use. So great question. And thank you guys so much for watching this video at the end. Tom and I really appreciate all the support. We're getting so close to the 30,000 subscriber mark. So uh, thank you guys so much for all the support uh, through the forum of hitting that like button, commenting down below, and of course, subscribing. So uh, if you guys don't know, any comments really help us grow the channel. So like, even if you just leave a comment, like, you know, great video or comment for the algorithm, it really helps grow the channel and Tom and I really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for all of your support. Uh, with that being said, if you guys want to try out the options day trading bot, you can click the stocked up alerts link in the description down below. And if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.